Hello everyone. In this beginner tutorial, I will show you the most basic things of a blender. How to move around, how to add objects, how to manipulate and change those objects, how to give them materials, and finally, how to render your scenes. So let's get into it. First, make a new project file by pressing general. So now that we have opened a new file in Blender, you can see this. There are three important screens that you will need to know about. The first one is the biggest one, that is the viewport. Then to the side of that, there are two different panels. The first one is the scene collection in which you can see all the different things and objects that are in your scene. For example, currently it's a camera, a cube, and a light. And below that, you can see the object properties panel. In this panel, you can change all of the values of your objects. There are a lot of different things that you can add to your objects, but for now, we will stick to the simple things. For example, you can scale your cube, you can rotate it, and you can move it. You can do all of these things in the objects properties panel. But if we go to the top left side of the viewport, you can select a few tools which can help you. For example, let's select the move cursor. Once we've done that and we click on the cube, you can see these three arrows. These represent the three different axes of Blender. The Z one is up and down, the X one and the Y one. Okay, but how do you actually move in your viewport? Well, you can rotate your camera by pressing the middle mouse button on your mouse and holding it in and dragging around. To actually move around in the viewport, you will need to do the same thing, but together with pressing down the shift button. And then, as you can see, you can move around. In this tutorial, I want to use as few shortcuts as possible. But there is one shortcut that I would love to teach you about. And that is the shortcut for scaling objects. You can do this by pressing S on your keyboard and dragging your mouse around. As you can see, this scales your object. You can of course also do this in the object properties panel under the scale option, but pressing S and moving your mouse is really quick and handy. Also, if you press S for scale and then one of the three axes, this Z, Y or X. So if you press S and then the Z, then you will scale your object only on the Z axis. This is the one shortcut that I will tell you about for now because it's really handy. But for the rest of this video, we're going to keep it really easy. Okay, so now we are going to create our little forest scene. Let's first select our cube and scale it up a bit. Let's press S scale again and press Z to shrink the entire cube to something around this. Now, this will be our forest floor. So I'm going to name this cube floor. You can name an object by double pressing on its name. Now, often forest floors are a little bit green. So let's make our forest floor or cube green. How do we do this? Well, we go into our material properties panel. Once here, you can add a new material if there isn't already a material created for you. So let's press new material. Then you will get something like this. We're not going to cover every value that you can see here. For now, we are just going to change the base color of our cube slash forest floor. So let's go into the base color and create it to something green. But now, wait, we cannot see our cube turn green. Well, that's because we are currently in solid mode. To see the materials of our objects, we will need to go into material mode. As you can see, 
you can now see the color of your cube and you can play around with what color you want but for a forest floor it has to be something green okay so now what do you think of when you think of a forest floor or a forest the first thing that i think of is a little tree so let's make a little tree first we're going to create the stem of the tree which will be a cylinder how do we add a cylinder or any object for that matter we go into add mesh and then we choose cylinder now we have added a cylinder with the cylinder selected and with the move cursor we're going to drag the cylinder up and you can scale it in the objects properties panel but i will be scaling it by using s and s z again like this and we can drag the stem down so that it's in the ground so now let's give our stem a little brown color we go into the materials properties make a new material and change the base color to something brown like this so now we have a forest floor with a brown tree stem so let's make the rest of the tree we're going to do this by going to add mesh and cone this will be our tree once we have created our cone you can see that in the left bottom side of the screen this little tab shows up we can extend this and then there are a few options that we can play around with so so this is our current cone i want to reduce the amount of vertex that it has so i'm going to do that and i will keep it at around nine once done i'm going to drag the cone with the move tools selected a little bit up and i will position it inside of the tree stem so now we have created a little tree you can of course change the size of this by going into the objects properties you can also rotate it with the object properties or you can choose here the rotate tool but for now we're going to keep it simple and this will be fine so with our little tree selected go into the material properties add a new material and change the base color to something like dark green so now you can already see that we have created a little fun tree in our nature scene now we are also going to create a little mushroom for our forest scene so let's do that first we're going to add a new cylinder go to add mesh new cylinder we're going to position this somewhere else and scale it down because it's smaller than a tree like this i don't mind that the mushroom stem has a white color so i'm not going to change its material this is fine for now now let's create the top of the mushroom so go into add mesh and we're going to add a uv sphere let's drag this out of our tree for now and as we can see this is our sphere now we are going to go a little deeper in all of the possibilities of blender in this mode of this viewport that we currently have we can see that we are in the object mode let's transition into the edit mode as you can see now you can see all of the vertex of the object if we want to go and see the other vertex of other objects we will first need to go back into object mode select that object and go into edit mode okay so let's go into edit mode for our sphere now we are going to delete the lower half of our sphere we can just select that lower half but if we now turn to the other side of our sphere we can see that we haven't selected this side so with shift select with shift press down we can select the other side of our cube 
sphere, I'm sorry, like this. Now, to delete all of these vertex, we press X, delete vertex. Now we have the top of our mushroom, but you can see that it's hollow. So now let's select all of the bottom vertex like this and press F. Now we have closed it. You don't need to know all of these shortcuts. I'm just showing them to you. So let's go back into object mode. L now let's move the top of a mushroom to the right position. Let's scale it down and position it somewhere close to the top of the mushroom stem. To make this process easier, with the top selected, we can go into the top view, like this. Now you can see where the stem of the mushroom is. So we can roughly position our top of the mushroom correctly. If you're not sure if the top of a mushroom is on the lower stem of the mushroom, we can go into wireframe mode and you can see our cylinder that we made beforehand. So let's do something like this. And now it's exactly on top of the mushroom stem. So let's go back into the material view like this. Now we have created our little mushroom. For the top side of the mushroom, let's create a new material and make it something red, like this. Now our forest scene is already starting to come alive a little bit. But let's make something extra. Now let's make a small tiny river inside of our forest floor. But how are we going to do that? Well, let's go and select our forest floor, go into edit mode, and you can see all of the different vertex. Let's select one side of the entire floor and click on the move tool. We're going to move this back to somewhere around here. Press E and click the left button without moving your mouse. And now you can move the cursor tool and you can see that we have created a new face on our object. Let's do this once again. And we can see that we have created a small gap. Or really it's not a gap yet, but we are going to make it a gap. So let's go into the face selection tool because now we are only selecting vertex but we want to select an entire face. So let's go into the face selection tool, press this face and X for the lead and delete this face. Let's do that also for the two side faces. And now if we go into solid mode, you can not really clearly see, but there is a gap here. Here you can see it, but there is one problem we can see inside of the object's mesh. So let's close the mesh by going back into edit mode, select for vertex, select the vertexes of this side, press F to close it, and do that same process for the other side, like this. And now we have created a little gap through which our little stream can run. So let's create a new cube Let's reposition it and inside of the object's properties or by pressing S for scale, we can scale our object cube to fit inside of this gap. Now we have created our river. So let's give our river a new material and give it a bluish color like this. It's really simple, I know, but that's what this tutorial is for, to learn and show you the most simplest tools that are in Blender. So let's add some more trees to our scene. 
but we are not going to create the new trees from the ground up. We are going to copy the tree that we already have here. But currently our tree is made up of two different parts. So if we copy one, it doesn't copy the other. So let's select both of them and press Ctrl G. And now they are joined together. Now if we copy this, we can copy the entire tree. But please remember to not copy by pressing Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Because it's a little complicated, but that screws up the materials. So let's copy by pressing Shift D. And now we can copy our tree to more locations. Let's also do the same for our little mushroom. Let's select the top and the bottom part, Control E, and oh no, our entire mushroom turned red. Well, this is a problem. Let's press Control Z again and give our bottom stem of the mushroom a material. This will fix the problem. I should have given the object a material from the start. My fault, sorry. So let's press both of them again, Control Y, and they are joined together now. Now with Shift D, we can move them in our scene and place more mushrooms around. Like this. So, okay, for now, to keep it really simple, we are done with our scene. So how are we going to render this? Well, we have our camera right here. To go and see what our camera sees, we click this camera icon right here. To leave this view, we can click it again, or you can just move around and then we're out of this view. So, are we happy with this view of this camera? Not quite. So, let's move our camera by going into the objects properties and moving it around and rotating it until we are happy. I'm happy with something like this. So, okay. Now we can go into our render properties and make sure that our render engine for now is set to Eevee. If we now go into our shading viewport, we can see what the camera will see and what will be rendered. So let's do that. And oh no, it looks not really good. That's because we only have one light in our scene and that's this one. If we move our light, you can see that it affects the objects. In the light properties, we can also change the strength of the light and also change its color. But for now, let's keep it at white. One thing that I think will be really fun and helpful to our render, that is changing the background color, which is currently gray. So let's go into the world properties and change the color of our background to something more fun. Something like, well, let's keep it at this, why not? A little bit pink. Okay, so now you can see that our scene looks a lot better. It has lighting and everything. So now if you want to render this, you can go into the render and say render image. And there you have the rendered image of our scene, which is done. You can save this by going to image and save as then you can save it just wherever you want. I hope that this really basic and simple tutorial helped someone out there. If you have any questions, feel free to place them in the comments below. Have a nice day and good luck rendering.